if you were, and it's Misha. So I thought it'd be a good idea to share my market sense and strategy with you guys and talk to you about how and why it's helped me go, like grow my idea so much. And just to explain everything easily, I've made a short PowerPoint. So this was at the start of stage six when we did market sensing and I answered this question in the middle. And it really like helped me realise like the potential for an app and all the ideas there are. I mean, there's so much room for growth when you look at all the other apps. So I did like more of an in-depth analysis of how I could like market sense and I just wanted to share that with you guys. So I started off by establishing my ideas before. So to do that, I answered these two questions. So what are my aims for the online platform that I want to create and how do I plan to get them across? I did this by creating a table. So these are my aims and to get valuable information to students, build a community where people can help each other and help students overcome their day-to-day -day problems. Now, how I plan to get them across, as you can see here, a very simple, very vague, courses, quotes, blog, advice. I mean, it had no direction and it wasn't very specific at all. So, I mean, you can see at the end how much of a change there is once you've done this market sensing bit. Right, so I started off by finding apps to review. Now, uh, when looking at apps to review, they don't have to be direct competitors because we all have our own unique ideas, which means we won't be able to find someone who's doing exactly the same thing as, a, uh, as us. Sorry. And I feel like that's fine because because we're doing online platforms, it's more about the features we use and which technology we use to get our information across rather than, um, you know, trying to beat someone else or what you're doing. And because there's so many, like, hundreds of thousand apps out there, I mean, each one has a very unique feature to it. So if you collect all the best features from the best apps, you are likely to get one of the best apps anyway. So um, I'll just show you how I reviewed my apps, all of them, one by one. So these two questions are the ones I used. So my favourite features about each app, what made it unique, what made it engaging, and why did I think people visited there in the first place? Now the second question is... How could I link it to my platform? So this is the most important one. Trying to find, use the feature to try and link it back to your own product. How you can utilize that feature in your own product, even if you have to like tweak it a bit, you know, to try and make it your own. Now, just keep these two questions in mind because these are the ones that you're going to use every time you review an app or a blog or whatever. So I start off with personal research because there's so much you can learn from yourself and your own habits before you look at other people's. So the first thing I did, I opened up my phone and found my favourite apps that I use every day. Now, then, like, after finding them, I answered the same two questions, uh, these two questions. So what my favourite features were and how I could link it back to my own app. So here's an example of what I did. These are my apps that I use every day. And these are the examples. So the first bullet point shows my favourite features. And each of the second bullet points shows how I linked it back to my own product. So instead of constantly writing blogs, it would be helpful to make these kind of videos. People can ask questions and professionals and get advice. I mean, there's so much you can do, basically. And these are just a few of them. Now I'm moving on to extra research. So, like I was saying earlier, there's so many apps out there. You never know. I mean, you never know which ones to use. So I suggest going to the most successful ones. So, like, the best of the best apps. And to do that, I started by opening up the App Store. Now, the App Store is an absolute... Oh, sorry. The App Store is, like, an absolute gold mine for this kind of stuff. So, as you can see on the screen recording, um, App Store is, like, like, I'm not sure about Samsung. I think they do the similar thing. Uh, Google Store do the same similar thing as well. Like, they have collections of the best and the most recommended apps, the most downloaded ones, and... From there, you can tell which ones are the most successful. And from there, you can take tips about the best best parts about these apps, the worst part about these apps, and answer those two same questions, your favourite features, and how you can get back to your product. Now, if you do that with the best apps, that's what I did. I tried to quite a lot of them out. And, um, you know, I got quite a lot of ideas from them. Okay, so another set method of research is to look at the primary purpose of your app. So there's a lot of purposes there are for, like out there for apps. There's entertainment, networking, communicating, teaching. My primary purpose was teaching. 
So what I did was go online and type in top 10 teaching apps for students. Now, this was like the best. I think this was like the best like jump up for me because there are so many apps out there for teaching that I didn't know about and they all have like their own methods of teaching. Now, before I was just thinking about writing like articles or whatever, but I realised how boring that is and like there's so many other methods out there that you can use for putting information and it's a lot more engaging and there's a lot more people likely to use it if you do it that way. And then there's the third uh, target, sorry, the third one, which is look at your target audience. So whether your target audience is professionals working in a business or whether it's students like it was for me. What I did was go online, go into Google or YouTube, type in top 10 apps for students and that's what I did and it comes up the most downloaded, the most successful apps for students and that could be really helpful for you guys because it's like you need to build your app around your audience anyway and if you can adapt it to their needs then it's more likely it's going to help more people. Right, so yeah, so this is just another example of what I did. LinkedIn, Adapt, Seneca, Pinterest, Motivation, these are just some of the apps I have found from extra research. And next to them I wrote down my favourite features. So this is the last slide where I talk about my idea growth. Um, these were my ideas before, just on this side. And these are like, of, you can see they're really simplistic. And then the ideas after are a lot more specific. You can see how much direction there is in them. Hyperlearning, flashcard courses, students with similar interests can talk to like random individuals, podcasts, calendars embedded with like an AI mood tracker, habit tracker and all of that. I mean, there's so much difference. I mean, these are just a few of them, but I have learned so much like just over this whole um, topic. And, and guys, I feel like you should just like try, you know, just try trial and trial with different apps. See how far you can get with your own product. Anyway, that's it. Um, if you guys didn't understand anything I was saying because I was talking quite quick, just let me know and I'll help you. All right. Um, hope it helped you guys. Bye.